हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टूडे पॉइंट ऑफ डिस्कशन इज केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ इथिलीन ग्लाइकॉल और रिमेम्बर इथिलीन ग्लाइकॉल इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इनग्रेडियंट विच इज लार्जली यूज एज ए सॉल्वेंट नाउ इट इज ए डाइहाइड्रिक अल्कोहोल एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टीज आर सिमिलर टू दैट ऑफ मोनोहाइड्रिक अल्कोहल सो लेट सी द केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ इथिलीन ग्लाइकॉल वन बाय वन so very first property which can be discussed is reaction with reaction with sodium metal now remember sodium is reactive metal so it is capable of displacing hydrogen from oh group that's why when we treat ethylene glycol with sodium then hydroxyl hydrogen atoms get replaced by sodium and that lead to the formation of a product with the evolution of hydrogen gas so this is known as di sodium glycolate so di sodium glycolate is obtained when we treat glycol i mean ethylene glycol with sodium so next very important property is reaction with pcl3 and pbr3 so first of all remember when we treat ethylene glycol with pcl3 then ethylene dichloride is expected remember ethylene glycol can be given as so this is ethylene glycol so when we treat this with pcl3 so oh group ultimately will get replaced by chlorine and that lead to the formation of an ingredient like this along with h3 po3 so this is known as ethylene dichloride which happens to be the vicinal dihalide now when we treat the same with pbr3 the result will be the same instead of chlorine bromine uh, are present i mean ethylene dibromide is obtained but the in this reaction pbr3 is needed to be prepared in situ that is indirectly so for that ethylene glycol is to be treated with what red phosphorus and bromine now this red phosphorus and bromine re by reacting provide pbr3 and provided pbr3 react with our ethylene glycol and that lead to the formation of ethylene dibromide along with h3po3 but remember when we try to react the same with pi3 so let's discuss reaction with pi3 remember pi3 is also needed to be prepared indirectly i mean ethylene glycol is to be heated with mixture of red phosphorus and iodine so this mixture provides pi3 and oh will get ultimately replaced by iodine right here and that lead to the formation of ethylene diiodide but remember size of iodine is larger so due to repulsion here by iodine get departured and this lead to the formation of ethylene so net result of this reaction is the ethylene i mean ethylene is obtained when we treat ethylene glycol with what uh, pi3 now next very important thing is reaction with acetic acid reaction with acetic acid we know very well alcohols react with carboxylic acid producing ester and reaction is known as esterification so likewise here when we treat ethylene glycol with acetic acid then also esterification takes place and this lead to the formation of a product which may be given as so this is known as glycol diacetate remember this is glycol diacetate 
so in this way when acetic acid is treated with what uh, ethylene glycol glycol diacetate is obtained as a product now next very important thing is the reaction with <laughs> nitrating mixture remember nitrating mixture is the mixture of concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid so when we heat this ethylene glycol with nitrating mixture that is concentrated hno3 and concentrated h2so4 then ultimate nitration takes place and that lead to the formation of a product which can be given as so this is the product so obtained with the departure of water so this is called as ethylene dinitrate and remember ethylene dinitrate is an explosive material so it is used as an explosive for sure then next very important thing we can take care of is the action of heat so upon tremendous heating so next action of heat so when ethylene glycol is heated strongly i mean at high temperature about 600 degree celsius then intramolecular dehydration takes place and upon intramolecular dehydration ethylene oxide is obtained remember this is ethylene oxide so intramolecular dehydration can be expected when we heat merely ethylene glycol now next very important thing is oxidation reaction remember product of oxidation depends upon the oxidizing agent chosen i mean when ethylene glycol is heated with concentrated nitric acid remember nitric acid is oxidizing acid and it is capable of oxidizing both of the oh groups present in ethylene glycol and that lead to the formation of oxalic acid which happens to be dicarboxylic acid so bottom line is ethylene glycol can be oxidized to oxalic acid by using concentrated nitric acid but when we do i mean when we try to oxidize the same by using acidified potassium permanganate so acidified potassium permanganate is also a potential oxidizing agent thus it oxidizes ethylene glycol to formic acid remember so when we use acidified kmno4 then formic acid is obtained but when we use concentrated nitric acid to oxidize the ethylene glycol then oxalic acid is obtained as a product now very important thing is how to convert ethylene glycol into formaldehyde remember one can do that in simple manner so in order to do so we need to react with so reaction with hio4 or lead tetraacetate that is cs3coo by 4 pb so when we treat ethylene glycol with either hio4 or lead tetraacetate then it is get converted into formaldehyde which can be summarized as so this is ethylene glycol when we treat this ethylene glycol with hio4 or instead of using hio4 one can use this also that is the lead tetra acetate then this ultimately will get converted into formaldehyde so glycol can be converted to formaldehyde in this manner now next very important thing is action of concentrated h2so4 remember h2so4 is a dehydrating agent thus when we heat ethylene glycol so remember ethylene glycol can be given as this is one molecule and this is another molecule of it 
when we heat ethylene glycol with concentrated H2SO4 then first of all intermolecular dehydration takes place and as a result of intermolecular dehydration the product first of all we get is diethylene glycol so remember this is known as diethylene glycol and diethylene glycol on further heating in presence of same so what here happened departure of water i mean intermolecular dehydration so diethylene glycol further loses water in this manner so thereby departure of water takes place again and this lead to the formation of a valuable product and this is called as dioxane in this way dioxane can be prepared in the better way now next very important thing is action of zncl2 so dry <coughs> anhydrous zncl2 is also capable of bringing the dehydration and that to intramolecular dehydration so what happens exactly when we treat ethylene glycol remember ethylene glycol can be given as so this is ethylene glycol when we heat this in presence of zncl2 so upon heating dehydration takes place first of all so oh from this carbon and hydrogen from this lead to the departure of water and that lead to the formation of vinyl alcohol also remember vinyl alcohol is in all form which is comparatively less stable so ultimately it tautomerizes tautomerizes to the comparatively more stable keto form and keto form of this vinyl alcohol is nothing but the acetaldehyde which is more stable than vinyl alcohol in this way ethylene glycol can be converted into acetaldehyde now last thing is the reaction with ketones remember when we treat ethylene glycol with ketone like acetone then cyclic ketals are expected remember so in presence of dry hcl ethylene glycol so last one is the reaction with acetone so ethylene glycol reacts with acetone ethylene glycol can be given as so this is the ethylene glycol so it wholly react with acetone acetone can be written as ch3co ch3 in presence of dry hcl then what happens thereby loss of water in this manner takes place and this lead to the formation of a product what we called the cyclic ketal with the departure of water so this is a cyclic ketal in this way <coughs> glycol react with different reagents producing different type of products now last very important thing is uses of ethylene glycol remember ethylene glycol is commercially important ingredient so it's very first used use i must say as antifreeze so it is used as an antifreeze in radiators automobile radiators so it is very important <coughs> use of ethylene glycol and remember it is used in preparation it is used in preparation of dacron then dioxin etc so dacron is a polyester polymer so in order in in order to prepare dacron we need to use ethylene glycol as, as one of the starting materials another very important thing is it is used 
एज अ सॉलवेंट एंड ऑल्सो एज ए प्रिजर्वेटिव सो इट इज प्रिजर्वेटिव एज वेल अनादर अप्लीकेशन ऑफ इट इज द कूलिंग एजेंट इन एरोप्लेन्स रिमेंबर सो इट इज यूज एज कूलिंग एजेंट इन एरोप्लेन्स एंड लास्टली इट इज यूज टू प्रिपेयर एक्सप्लोजिव रिमेंबर इट इज यूज to prepare explosives and uh, remember the nitro derivatives of ethylene glycol is popular explosive thank you very much